Well, hello, furniture people. I'm Joe, and I like refinishing old furniture. Somehow, I decided it would be a good idea to film that and share it. So here we are, turning grit into gold. This is, uh, on several levels, an interesting uh, piece for me personally. Uh, oh, and by the way, we have uh, guest good boy Hank, along with Eddie, both very interested in this dresser. This is a piece that's been in my family for probably about 50 years. Uh, I remember using this dresser as a child, and uh, for whatever reason, it followed me through life, and I still have it. And this is also the first piece uh, that I decided to film for YouTube. And you can see here I did my lead-based paint test. Uh, it did test negative. And again, when I sand and work on something, I don't want to put myself in danger, my family or my pet, or any guest pets. So I do the lead-based paint tests every time, unless I know that it's just a, a latex paint or bare wood or whatever. Uh, so in any case, like I was saying, this piece, uh, it's been in my family for many, many years. Um, it followed me around. And in the early shots uh, that I was showing at the beginning of the video here, you can see there had been water damage on the leg. It's um, been used and abused uh, pretty hard over those decades. No maker's marks or anything on the back. You know, there's a little card right there, but that's long gone. Um, who knows where it went? Uh, there was also a, a cut here in the side evidently got used as a sawhorse at one time and the boards up on top were uneven you can see that one there has popped a little bit they're splitting apart and I'll get to repairing all that as we move through the video typical kind of damage on the front there was no mold or anything it doesn't smell um, doesn't smell bad or anything like that um, but pretty beat up the hardware is still nice though the front hardware uh, no keys available for the locks. Those keys are long gone. So this hardware, this trim around the, uh, the lock was just held in with tiny little tacks. And uh, I needed something that wouldn't bend. It's relatively light metal. It's, you know, uh, thicker than, say, a soda can, but not by a lot. Um, but they're all, uh, the poles and the, these decorative pieces are all in nice shape. Um, so I got them off safely. And if I, you know, scratch the wood or something a little bit when I take something off like that, I. And I, as long as it's not a deep scratch, I don't get real worried about it. Uh, you know, I'm going to be sanding down the front here, um, taking it all down, and any tiny little scratch that I might inadvertently put into it, we could sand it out. And with this, as I worked on it, the, uh, I'll call that beadboard, for lack of a better term there with the, the three bumps uh, hard to sand inside of that so I did use some stain varnish remover which actually worked pretty nicely um, to bring that down and uh, I came up with a very striking end result for the finishes that I chose for the drawer fronts the sides at the top of this dresser things up a little bit, glue things back together in places, uh, some separations um, on the whole piece, just with time. Um, so here, filled it in with my favorite Gorilla Glue, clamp it down, let it dry.
And as I, uh, I stated earlier in the video, this was the first piece that I filmed myself working on, uh, you know, with the intent to create a YouTube channel. I don't even know that I'd created the channel when I did this work yet. Um, and I didn't think through well at all how I was working on it. My workshop's in my basement. At this point, it was probably December of 2022, if I recall right. And uh, my furnace would go on and off in the background. I recorded myself running the sander. Uh, you know, noises and sounds that you just don't want that ambient noise in the background as, uh, as you're producing something. Um, and it took time. I, you know, eventually learned here, obviously, in iMovie, how to adjust and eliminate background noises and things that I don't want. And learned how to add music in. And uh, it's like anything with practice, you get better at it. Um, so I decided, I also made this video much longer than I had ever imagined it would be at about 51 minutes. Uh, and if you've hung out this long, uh, first I appreciate that. Uh, if you have, please like and subscribe. Um, again, that helps me build my following uh, and understand my audience and who I'm producing videos for. Um, and I, I love to read and I re try to reply to many of the comments um, that are made uh, with a helpful intent. Uh, here's one where I had to back out the sound of the see my DeWalt sander there once I got focused and uh, I had to back out all the sound of the sander um, so that it wasn't really annoying. Um, and just show the wood uh, being laid bare again um, and ready for fresh stain and a new color. In this dresser, now that I'm watching myself do this again, this is a full wood front. Uh, this is not a veneer product. So I didn't have to worry about chipped veneer or sanding too deeply or anything like that. A little bit of an inspection of one of the drawers here. testing it, seeing what the integrity of it is like. Is it nice and tight still? Is it the board's bent? Do I need to do anything?
and the lock here, I'm jumping back and forth a little bit, but the lock here held on by a little tax. the furniture stripper again to get inside the nooks and crannies of the detail work on the front of the dresser. Spray this on, let it sit for a while, use some steel wool to uh, really get in there. Remove as much of the varnish as, uh, as is possible. detail uh, on the, the hardware, the locks and the poles for this. And again, these locks were just held in with little tacks, um, the same as the decorative piece that's on the front of the drawer that I showed earlier. And this is very typical um, in antique furniture to see these very simple poles with the square nuts attached to them. Very common. The threading was very standardized at the time. The size of it, it's, it's very typical. I see it all the time. And this, kind of the crown, the brass color of it, the crown uh, on, the, uh, on the pole there. Really, really love those. And the patina that they have at this time too is beautiful. So I actually didn't you know, maybe clean them up a little bit, but I really did not do much to the hardware on this piece because I just I liked it so much as it was. At this point, I've used at least three different tools to try and get these little tacks out. And uh, that little tiny wire wire cutters was the least effective. Getting a uh, chisel under the the top head of the tack holding this in worked pretty well here. And yes, I did find the tack after it fell on the floor and reused it. to look over the hardware too to see any damage on it, any burrs, anything that needs to be filed down, and just make sure that it's in good shape. Are the screws straight? These screws are not 
that one there looks crooked because it is. Uh, they're not, they're inserted through holes. They're not a part of it, if that makes sense. These all looked good. So, working on the drawers now, pulling those back together, gluing them up. They'll be in good shape eventually. This would be another recovered clip from when I originally filmed and I didn't think through at all turning the camera off, turning rather the microphone off on my camera. Um, and as I'm going through this whole process, you learn things about wood, you learn things about tools, things about furniture strippers, chemicals. You also learn things about editing, editing an iMovie. And uh, I learned how to effectively eliminate the noise of a sander, which no one would want to listen to. So I took down this front detail, uh, the bottom of the dresser, when it's standing on its legs as well as the legs and then cleaned up the sides with a light grit sandpaper. And eventually the combination of multiple stains that I used on this, this dresser is beautiful. Some nice photographs at the end of the video. The payoff, if you're still hanging in there, is very high on this one. It's a beautiful piece of furniture. And while I didn't film it earlier on, I showed it was a, a cut in the top. Where it looks like this was used as a sawhorse at one point. I promise it wasn't me. Um, and I was able to uh, fill that in. And I don't really show it in the rest of the video, and I can't find any film of the process of how I did it, but uh, I filled it in with a, uh, a Minwax product, cleaned it up, sanded it several times, and came up with a stain combination where you can tell that it's there if you're really looking, uh, but it doesn't particularly stick out, and if you placed some kind of a, a cloth or something over this dresser, obviously it would hide it too, but it doesn't stand out, certainly not the way that the cutout did when I started. As I go through this process and I'm watching while I'm recording the sound, watching the grain of this wood come back to life here, reminds me why I do this because I just the, the, the beauty in that grain is wonderful.
each of the door fronts sanded up very nicely to no major gouges, no major chips, a uh, little standard wear and tear here and there. And the varnish came off very readily. So a rear inside leg here, and I'm showing this. Um, I was uh, testing varnish colors. It's a convenient spot. If I make a mistake, it's going to be hard to see, easy to cover up. It doesn't stand out. And I wanted to see what the how the wood took a couple of different varnishes. That first one was a dark oak that I really love. And the next one coming up in a moment here is a uh, gun stock. It's a much warmer, uh, has better tones in it than uh, the dark oak does. distinct differences in how the grain shows up it's more readily apparent with the gun stock but the the darker grain with the dark oak stain is also beautiful and the two complement each other very nicely at this point I've made my decisions on what I want my final final piece to look like and I'm beginning at least 50% through here when you begin applying the stain after you've sanded and made repairs and glued and everything else you're at least halfway done at this point and uh, applying some stain to the top of that drawer grain is popping beautifully here you can see as my arm moves in and out of focus just how pretty it is the waves and the lines the same stain for all of the drawers. 
the parts of the frame and the top as I work my color combinations uh, with the stain. The final look that I wanted required the drawers to all be the same. Again, these larger drawers too, with the swirls in the wood. This dresser is easily a hundred years old, probably more. the hardware to go back on. At this point, I've obviously stained, I've also polyurethaned the front several coats of uh, polyurethane on the front of all the the drawers. So these are well protected going forward. And with the lighter stain on the front of the drawers, this hardware, the look of the hardware, pops even more. And the last bit of staining here now. So dark walnut on the top of the dresser is what I decided to do. Those boards early in the video I showed that they were separating a little bit. Uh, they were uneven at this point, and I didn't show it in the video, but they're glued back together. Everything is stabilized, uh, sanded smooth. So you have a nice, uh, pretty surface on the finished product. Here you can really start to see that grain popping with the dark oak and how the wood takes the stain. And uh, I always try and apply 
just like sanding with the grain of the wood rather than against it. And then uh, you get good penetration from the, from the stain and the pores of the wood, and little tiny, tiny fissures. that pretty. So for the front of the dresser, uh, sticking just like the top, sticking with a dark walnut stain for the most part. And you can see the green painter's tape right there, uh, as well as on the far side. Um, the legs uh, will end up doing in a, the gunstock color. That slightly different wood, a different cut than the drawer fronts. So it has a, a little bit of a different hue in the end product, but matched it very nicely. And uh, it's a beautiful two-tone two -tone look to the whole thing that I really love. It makes the whole dresser just pop in a way that it wouldn't uh, if I was using entirely one, one type of stain over another. I understand why factory pieces like this were done in a single stain. Simply would have been for efficiency. You didn't have people making choices. It wasn't custom work. It was built. It was built quickly. Early assembly line type technology, cutting out the same pieces again and again, and, uh, producing as many pieces with as few people as possible and the goals of the manufacturer and then selling them. jumped over to the side here and at this point you can see that I've pulled off the painter's tape 
So I sanded the sides, brought them down. They cleaned up very nicely. Look at that grain, that swirly grain pop. That inner panel at the right hand side. And this is the dark oak again. I uh, stayed consistent with that for the top and the sides. But again, it, it just, it didn't show this way anymore with the old varnish that was on cleaning it up. It does so much for this piece. So the fronts, the fronts of the legs again, gunstock is the name of the stain that I'm using. And uh, applying with a small brush here to avoid slopping onto the front structure of the dresser. Now with this, you can really begin to see the contrast that I've created uh, for the front of this dresser, especially as I work my way closer to the camera here, the gun stock against the dark wall.
you've hung in here this long, I want to thank you very much. Developing a YouTube channel isn't easy. Figuring out who your audience is, the projects you want to work on, all the technical pieces between the furniture itself, as well as filming, editing, and everything else. Here's the final result on this particular piece. And again, I'm thrilled that I could share it with you. I'm thrilled that I have this, and that it's refreshed for a whole new life as an active piece of furniture. Stay safe and be healthy, everyone. Thank you.